Hi, my name is Jamie DeBrella, and uh, I did clinicals at the Children's Hospital in the orthopedic outpatient department, and this is presentation 2.0. OS is a 13-year-old female here for follow-up for right forearm deformity. She comes in today with her mother uh, for her annual orthopedic visit and sequential x-rays. At this time, patient reports intermittent forearm pain that is short-lasting and does not limit activities at all. She currently denies any pain, uh, occasionally uses ibuprofen, which is one to two times per month. patient was first seen for this in 2008 when she picked up her cat and felt a pop in her right forearm, uh, followed by pain. She went to her PCP and was referred to orthopedic tumor team, um, which at that time they, they found a pathologic fracture in the right forearm and diagnosed with ulnar monoastotic fibrous dysplasia. The orthopedic surgeon uh, discussed with the family at that point in time that if she breaks her arm in the future, he would place an intramedullary nail with fixation and straighten out that bone deformity. Family history is non-contributory and parents deny any familial history of bony abnormalities. Review of systems is focused on the upper extremity. Uh, vital signs are within normal limits. Pertinent positives include asymmetric forearms with the right forearm being larger and has a slight bowed appearance. Patient has occasional pain of that right forearm without trauma and there is no pain on palpation. Pertinent negatives are that there are no neuro deficits. Uh, no ca cafe au lait spots, which can point to McCoon Albright syndrome. We did a two view forearm x ray, which showed intramedullary diaphyseal lesion with thin bulged cortex in the ulna and a slight angular deformity of the ulna. Differentials include aneurysmal bone cysts, osteosarcoma, osteoblastoma, and fibrous dysplasia. The assessment is that the right forearm is larger than the left with no associated pain, function remains intact, and that uh, she's diagnosed with an unchanged monoastotic fibrous dysplasia of the right forearm. Plan is to continue monitoring the forearm annually with radiographs and to call or return to clinic for any, atri or for any traumatic event or uh, pain that is unrelieved with ibuprofen. Mom was concerned about the increased risk for fractures and we discussed the recommendation for Fosamax, but mom does not want to start any pills at this point in time. So we discuss dietary intake of calcium, supplementation, and doing weight-bearing activities. The strengths of my encounter were the musculoskeletal exam and patient interaction. Uh, weakness is definitely x-ray interpretation and knowing what the guidelines are for orthopedic specialty lesions. The theory I used was Alberta Bandura's self efficacy theory, which is based on the social cognitive model. There are three factors that influence self-efficacy, behaviors, environment, and personal. Uh, Bandura states that the goals are achieved through perseverance and overcoming obstacles. OS has to understand that you know, she has a, a, a RM uh, deformity and that she will have intermittent pain and that she needs to overcome any poor self-image. With family reinforcement and support, uh, she's been able to build her self-esteem and that is evident and she can now joke about uh, having a larger forum and being a better volleyball player. My question when looking for research was what are the guidelines for this type of lesion? And after doing a lot of searches on several databases, the article I chose is called Fibrous Dysplasia, written by Riddle and Blee. The article is very comprehensive and covered the clinical presentation, pathophysiology, differentials, treatment, and prognosis of fibrous dysplasia. Although it was well written, uh, there were many limitations to the article, including not being a research article, but it is evidence-based. The article did cite many founding researchers uh, on the topic of fibrous dysplasia, um, but concludes that we don't know very much about the disease process and that with further research, an improved treatment can be developed. Fibrous dysplasia is a chronic benign condition, often incidentally found on x-ray. It's caused by a somatic gene mutation affecting bone cell production. Due to this bony abnormality, the bone is weakened, which can cause pain and make it more susceptible to fractures. It's more commonly found in the hip, the mandible, and rib areas. So there's very little research done on the disease in the upper extremity, uh, which is another limitation. The only articles I could find were either case studies, case reviews, um, but no research on uh, random control trials. 
Um, I attempted to locate clinical guidelines and again um, was unsuccessful in finding anything particular to the upper extremity. I believe that this information is necessary as we image pediatric patients, understanding the type of lesion, and to look for polyosotic dysplasia, which can turn malignant. The main thing is to re refer to an orthopedic specialist in the future.